Yes, I welcome it very much. Um, contrary to what John Bolton has just said, I think that it makes it much less likely that Iran could ever create a nuclear bomb than if there was no deal. Uh, and what people like Mr. Bolton and indeed Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel failed to take into account is what would have happened if there was no deal? Because if there was no deal, in my judgment, the international consensus in favour of tough sanctions would have started to fall apart. It's been remarkable that China and Russia and the European Union and the United States have stayed together for so long to negotiate this deal. But China and Russia have been very anxious to build up trade and political relations with Iran. And within the European Union, very strong commercial pressures indeed, particularly in Germany and Italy, for breaking down sanctions. You would have seen those decay without any of the very intrusive inspection arrangements which are fundamental, a fundamental part of this agreement. Those who are sceptical would say that just the fact that a deal's been done is no guarantee. They will say, look at Bill Clinton in 1994, who hailed a momentous agreement in which he guaranteed that North Korea wouldn't be able to build nuclear weapons. And we know that since then they say they've carried out successful tests. So why should we trust this deal? Well, for, for, for one thing, uh, Iran is not North Korea, and that's the fun most fundamental reason. You've got to make a judgment based on the, the way this country is. It, North Korea is right in one extreme. It's a completely totalitarian state, and it's frankly sheltered as well, for complex reasons, by China. Iran's in a very different circumstance, and as we've heard uh, from uh, Professor Zhezhez uh, just now, the sanctions have really bitten uh, on Iran. They've got a young population. It's a large population. It's the size of Turkey. And uh, there are huge pressures internally in, f in favor of Iran becoming part of the international community uh, and shifting its international focus. Now, the great frustration is we almost came close to a deal, had it not been for intransigence, I'm afraid, by John Bolton and other people in the US administration in 2005-06. We could have had a deal. We could have had a deal when it was Hassan Rouhani was across the table from us negotiating. At that stage, Iran's uh, nuclear power program was in relative infancy. They had 200 centrifuges, and they're now got it getting on for 20,000, so a lot of years have been lost, but I'm in no doubt, that having read this document, and it runs to 150 pages, it's an extraordinarily detailed document, it pins Iran down, and some of its provisions will last for 25 years. Well, you say that, and yet, as you will know, Iran's critics, its enemies, are fearful that Iran is hell-bent on acquiring nuclear weapons, and all they've agreed to now is a delay, and that is all, and, and have won concessions in the meantime. I don't think there's any significant evidence that Iran is today intent on acquiring nuclear weapons. There was, which is why the negotiation started back in 2003. The last national intelligence estimate, which was published by the United States, was that they judged that Iran stopped seriously trying to develop a nuclear weapons program in 2003. Now, I've always worked on the basis that what Iran has been trying to do, particularly under Ahmadinejad, was to get together the technology so that they could move to weaponize uh, a, a, a systems with nuclear warheads if they so chose. What this deal does is set that back very significantly. And I think Iranian leaders today, under Rouhani and under the Supreme Leader, judge that it's not in their interests to have a nuclear weapons program. Uh, and it makes them much more vulnerable. And the moment there is any suspicion at all that they're going to do that, sanctions go back and they become a pariah. And I don't think they'll be willing to risk that. Is there a risk, though, of an arms race in the region? If Saudi Arabia, for example, is mistrustful of the deal, might it feel compelled to, to develop a, a nuclear program and, and deepen those Sunni-Shia divides well, in the, that region? There are serious anxieties in the Arab world amongst the Saudis and amongst the Gulf states, which we all need to take account of. Uh, they're, they're worried uh, about uh, Iran developing uh, a hegemony in the area. Um, I think it's for... Western leaders particularly, particularly uh, President Obama and uh, Prime Minister Cameron and others, to try and assuage those fears. I think one has to understand them historically as well. So I don't dismiss uh, those fears, but I also hope that what these leaders will say to uh, the Gulf states and to Saudi Arabia is that uh, this is a much better situation than what would have happened if 
there had been no deal at all, because be in no doubt, no deal would not have represented a continuation of the status quo. It would have ended up with a terrible mess. And as for an arms race, I doubt it actually very much, because in the end, in practice, uh, Saudi Arabia can shelter behind the nuclear shield of the United States, and the Iranians are not, they're not stupid. Uh, they're not going to start engaging in a conflict either with the Saudis or with uh, the Gulf states, which could lead to anywhere, anything approaching a, a nuclear conflict, because they would lose.